like the Duke of Edinburgh you did, that doesn't actually matter. I'm sorry. Like the, when you went GCSE, the teachers all said, oh, Duke of Edinburgh, you have to, it's going to be, it's going to help you so much, you know, you're going to, university's going to love your Duke of Edinburgh. They don't care. So the secret ingredient to writing a good personal statement is, hi everyone, I just wanted to quickly do a video on um, personal statements for medicine. Now, a disclaimer is that I feel a bit nervous making this video because I don't do medicine, but before you click away, I just want to say that I've done some research and although maybe it's not the best, I think it's still worth a watch, so I would really appreciate it if you could stick around and maybe it might help. And I am filming this video in 2020, so which is when the virus is here and so many work experiences cancelled. And so I just wanted to offer a bit of advice on what I would do if you were if I was you and applying to med at this year. Um, but like lots of stuff I'm gonna say is kind of general advice for any year. Um, and so yeah, so let's get into the video. So for medicine, I guess you guys know that you need to take biology and chemistry for A level, as well as like um, other options like the third, like maths or physics. Um, and you guys, I think, have to do either the BMAT or the UK CAT, UCAT, UK CAT, and it depends on the university, of course. Um, I personally, because I applied to Oxford to do economics and management, I did lots and lots of BMAT papers, uh, section one, and so I could, well, my advice really is just practice. And I personally used Six Med, the website for it, because um, they offer bursaries, and I was eligible for it. And I found it really useful. And yeah, definitely recommend. Not sponsored. I just say that I was very grateful to be given a bursary for it, and the resource is really helpful. And everyone who's applying to Med should try it. And also, my friends say that Medify is also good, so that might be something to look out for. Um, I will definitely leave the links below, not affiliate links, and right. So for you, Cat, I think you guys need 680 if you want to go to apply to Oxbridge, and for BMAT you need basically at least one section above a 6, if not above 4.5, and basically 4.5 in other sections and you're pretty good for an interview. Basically I wrote down all the notes and I will link the document below because I don't want to keep staring down and reading them because that's not very professional. So yeah, and I'm just going to jump straight to um, personal statements. But before I do that, I think I should address the concern about work experience for medicine. And I know that you know that everyone is going through this and that everyone well, in, in 2020 doesn't have work experience because they're all cancelled. And so the good thing is that you are not alone. The good thing is that universities know this. And I also think, in my opinion, that this is an actually an amazing opportunity for you guys to really stand out, to show the tutor reading a personal statement that you can basically demonstrate how knowledge you are about the industry and how you are ready to study medicine even without work experience. And what I would do if I was you, what I would do is I was you, um, what I would do is that if you want to do medicine, I can guess that you might have been to a hospital before and you might have experience with something about medicine. And so I would, what I would do is that I would talk about that experience, but I would also say, like, I would also link it to the idea that I didn't get work experience, but I would talk about it from my perspective and I would talk about it from the doctor's perspective as if I was doing work experience. So. Yes, your work experience is cancelled, but you can still say that you are kind of, you understand what it's like because you can see what the doctors are doing from your personal experience, if that makes sense. And so to be honest, I don't think it's a big fuss about not having work experience. And I think that there are so many um, resources out there to help you guys. So there are like, I think my friend watches, my friend who does, who's doing medicine watches surgeries, like videos of surgeries like every day and you know, that's good enough I think to like really understand 
what it's like to be a doctor. Who needs work experience when you can like watch these really like live videos? But yeah, of course, work experience gives you the feeling of what it's like to be in a hospital and stuff. And I'm sure you've had that experience before. I mean, I was in hospital for three months, but that's another story. Um, and yeah. I'm sorry that maybe wasn't what you guys wanted to hear. I have been trying to see if I could like, get some help and see if I could maybe organise something for you guys. At the moment it's a bit hard because things aren't getting better, they're getting worse as everyone knows. So I'm really sorry about that but I have not given up yet. Um, so yeah. Um, so. Let's talk about the personal statement. So the personal statement is 4,000 characters and basically what the tutor is looking for is are you academically capable, do you actually want to be a doctor and do you have any extracurriculars that are just that show you that you can balance university life because medicine is six years, like six years and it's hard and if you can show that you can manage A-levels with um, extracurricular it kind of like helps like show that you know you're going to survive for six years because tutors don't want to choose someone who's going to drop out so bear that in mind um, so i would say begin brainstorming around like august time and then but like always i would say keep a folder a ucas folder now i wish i did it i do have it actually i did have a i had an oxford folder where i would put like all my work for oxford and um i kind of just i, I don't want to say destroyed it but when I got rejected, I was a bit emotional, shall we say. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I will show something that I did in a different video all about my Oxford experience. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, definitely make a folder about everything you want to include. And I have created a personal statement sheet that I think might help. I mean, I guess you might have seen something similar, but the one I did is the one I did, personally. From me to you, my gift to you, and I hope that you download it and just have a look at it. If you don't use it, then um, it's okay, but if you found it useful, then I am so happy to, I'm so happy that you found it useful, um, because I just really want to help you guys, and I sometimes, I don't know, medicine, yeah, I wish I was talking about economics right now, I'm not going to lie, but, sorry. Um, yeah, so, the way I see my personal statement is basically, uh, to be honest, I really like my personal statement, but I also read it millions of times, so I don't want to read it again. But, like, how I see my personal statement is that I see it as a story. So, I am telling the tutor about me and a story about me basically and in a limited 4,000 words. I wrote double that and yeah so the first thing is that don't worry about word count first just brainstorm everything and cut it down later because it would change so much like my first draft looked nothing like my 20th draft and yes I did like 20 something drafts because I actually really enjoy the process but it took a lot of time and then I had to catch up on revision stuff which was really just that's why I say the jump from year 12 to year 13 is the biggest because you spend so much time on UCAS that you kind of have less time to revise year 13 stuff and you also have to revise year 12 stuff which is why I think the jump is just stressful <laughs> um, so yeah so see it as telling a story about yourself do not say since I was a young age I wanted to do a doc want to be a doctor or like what else like I just always wanted to be a doctor, just like blah blah blah, you know the cliche stuff, I'm sure you know it, and yeah, the first 10 ideas that you think of are probably going to be really common in every in everyone's mind, so don't use the first 10 ideas that come up, I would say. Um, but yeah, for me, I think, I didn't, oh yeah, don't, I guess, I'm jumping around a lot, I'm really sorry, I did plan this, but because I guess I'm not exactly an expert and this is my first time talking about personal statements since last September like it's been a while but I really like I just really enjoy the process um, and yeah. yeah so basically for the introduction don't if you like you don't have to have an introduction because I had an introduction but 
I ended up not having an introduction because when I was cutting words, like, I would rather have, I'd rather have the important stuff in the statement than an introduction of, I like economics, I mean, I like medicine because blah, 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 just go straight into the experience. So my structure would be experience, what you learned about it, why you enjoyed learning about it, and are there any other opinions you have about the event that happened, or did you read anything else that relates to the thing that happened? So talk about three main events. Talk about three like big things. I would say throughout your personal statement because that's yeah that's what I did around three big chunks of things. It's about depth and not breadth. I think is that what you say? Basically, quality over quantity. Talk a lot about a little. I think general advice you guys know. Um, I'm trying to keep this unique, and sometimes it's hard. But like I'm talking about this, so I guess it's unique. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, why the course? What interests you? Quality of a quantity. I've said this a million times. So yeah, it's, I think the most important thing is that you really have to be as you as you as you as you as you can be. You have to be as you as you can be. Yeah, that's it. Basically, be you and really talk about your experience. Don't try to be someone in who you want, and always talk about something that you are comfortable saying in interview, because. Um, I was applying to Oxford and I had to make sure that all the books I mentioned I read, all the articles I said I read I read, all the events I went to I did go to, and all the things I learned I did actually learn and I did more. Um, so yeah, having an interview is a pain, especially when you prepared so much and you didn't get an interview. Yep, that's sad. But it will teach you a lot of stuff. Um, any awards you got? I got two, well, two and a half, but two MFs awards and one general student, which I think helped a lot more than I, but, um, if you guys have any, if you guys don't have any awards, if you're in year 12, and you don't have to, like, competitions don't have to be outside, there are so many online, like, essay competitions or projects, you just have to do, you just have to Google search, and I will try to find some if I can and link it in the document. But I'm I haven't done it yet, so I don't know if it's if I can find any, but I will find I will be looking, but I don't know if there will be. So basically you have to do your research. It's about being independent. Um and I was also told to talk about science as well as medicine. So I think medicine don't just talk about being a doctor, but also talk about the science behind the being a doctor. Because in, in medicine you learn so much things, right? You learn about the science behind drugs and stuff. But yeah, so just don't talk just about medicine and talk about the science behind it and this is a tip from my friend and I didn't just think about it in my head. So it's a valid point. Um, make sure it flows. Oh, this is so important. Make sure it flows. Yeah, basically t the story has to be a story. It can't be, it can't be Shrek and then Minions and then bit of Toy Story 4 like it has to be Toy Story 4 or it has to be Minions it can't be a mixture of both because they just don't they just don't go along with each other you get me so yeah make sure it flows and that is kind of actually that is kind of the hardest is it the hardest part I would say it's hard but um yeah it's really 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 important to make sure it flows um it took me ages, honestly. But yeah, take your time. Like, if you are watching this now, you have so much time and just stay calm and start thinking about it and then August start putting it together, September start making it all beautiful and then October start cutting it down and you're good to go. School positions, it really, you don't have to be a senior prefect, like, you don't have to be head girl. It doesn't actually mean that much. Like the Duke of Edinburgh, you did. That doesn't actually matter. I'm sorry. Like the, when you went GCSE, the teachers all said, "Oh, Duke of Edinburgh, you have to, it's gonna be. It's gonna help you so much. You know, you're gonna universities are gonna love your Duke of Edinburgh. They don't care. Sorry. Yep. Where was I? Um, so work experience. Now this is more for non 2020 non 2020 um, um, applicants. Basically, yeah, work experience, what did you learn about it, um, 
how did the experience affect you know your perspective on the subject or on medicine and what skills do you already have about being a doctor and stuff and you know how how did the experience confirm your choice now all these points that i just said like when you think about it you don't actually need work experience to say about it so 2020 people i got you you know you can still talk about all the points that i just mentioned but using a different approach which is what you learn online the courses you took online the talks the documentaries the videos you watch online you know you can always talk about them and it's going to be okay your application is going to be fine how to stand out now i don't even know if my application stood out i mean i got offers from durham bath warwick lse um but does that mean it stood out or does it just mean it's good i never know and i will never know um well maybe i could just ask when i get into uni that's a good idea um but yeah how do you stand out i guess number one is to really keep thinking i thought a lot about my personal statement ever since i knew i had to like i think after my year 12 mocks i started thinking about it immediately and like when i went out for walks when i was in town just it was always in my mind so keep thinking about it even if you don't write about it but like i kept thinking about what other people would write and so i wouldn't write like it's about being different you don't want to be the same you never want to be the same you just want to be you but when you want to be you you also don't want to make sure you don't want to talk about the same things you're still being you. Um, what am I talking about? Anyway, so basically, you have to add a bit of you. So the secret ingredient to writing a good personal statement is, I think I'm going to use this as the intro, <laughs> is just adding a bit of you in every single event that you describe that you're doing so for me that's what I did and so for all the books I read for all the um, summer schools I went to work experience I went to I always added a bit of my personal life experience into it because um, my life experience really did affect my choice of study economics by the way economics is not just about money it's about so many things and it's really interesting um, so if like medicine isn't for you then <laughs> maybe try economics just kidding um, but yeah just everything you do just add a little bit of your personal story and when it all comes together it just talks about you plus your subject um yeah it just gives the university a feel of who you actually are your story and your passion like the reason behind your passion but never ever ever say the word passion in your personal statement never okay promise never say passion because it's probably gonna be said a million of times by other people and you are someone who's special and you are gonna stand out and you are the person who says passion okay. general tips so basically no lists and don't just describe your experience it's like an essay like you have to evaluate everything like don't just describe it evaluate it go deep into it keep asking yourself why and every time you read your statement ask yourself is this what like is this what a medical tutor would want to hear am i showing the tutor that i'm a good doctor i'm a good future doctor am i a good student am i open to new ideas am i flexible am i teachable do i want to learn do i sound like i want to learn um do you want to learn um yeah. structure and organization you have to be really careful about the structure just again flow and structure these are small things that aren't about content but can really affect your application because yeah it's about the marketing right like if i used my phone instead of a camera to film this video you probably would click out and i hope you appreciate that i am actually filming using a camera and so please give a like and subscribe i don't want to do that but like like and subscribe and yeah so don't worry about it. Don't worry about um, work experience being cancelled because everyone is in the same boat. Change your perspective and see that this cancellation of work experience is actually a really good opportunity to, you know, make you have more time to explore different stuff like documentaries, books, um, TV shows, drawings, like drawings of organs and stuff. Like there are so many different stuff you can do that will make you stand out probably even better than 
you know, 100, like 100 students going to the same hospital to do the same work experience to see the same thing. You're going to write about that and 100 other people, 100 other students are also going to write about that. But when now there's no work experience, everyone's going to do something different because they're alone. Like, so it's, it's good. It's good. It's going to be good. Um, so that's my general advice for work experience, like work experience, like personal statements. And I really, really, really hope that it helped. And I would, you know, I think it would be really interesting to help other people with work, um, personal statements and stuff. So if I could, I mean, if you would like me to help out, oh yeah, but don't, don't show too many people your personal statement because you would give, you would get too much, too many different feedback and you would just your mind would just be like who do I listen to I don't know um so yeah I mean but if you want me to have a look at it I can try I can give my advice but I'm not a medical school doctor so probably if you have an economic statement then I would be happy to read it um So that's all I wanted to say and also there are so many really good examples of personal statements online and I will link the um, websites in the description box and get you can get my um, personal statement planner thing and my document for my the notes I made for the video and also um, I've been using the UCAS guide and basically it has so many um, like real examples of people who go into Oxbridge for different subjects and I've been using that and it has an analysis on all the statements as well so it's really good um, I will link where you can get it in the description box and if I can help you with anything don't forget to comment and tell me and I will try my best to help um, and please give a like and subscribe even if you don't want to subscribe please give a like because it really does support this just baby 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 channel so yeah um have a good night evening morning good luck with your application and tell me how it goes